From creating the right look for editorial features, to selecting the correct outfits for music videos, concert performances, and even regular daily looks. A stylist has an important task of getting different fashion items and piecing them together to come up with a complete ensemble. Bella Adeleke is a prominent Nigerian stylist, and I have her here with me. We'll be discussing everything about her work, as well as what it takes to have the eye of a stylist. I'm Jamai Mausunde, and this is Fashion Insider. Hi Bella. Hi. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And thank you for my absolutely amazing <laughs> outfit. I feel very cute. Like I feel cool. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You studied biomedical sciences at the university. Uh huh. And now you're a creative director, a stylist, and a designer. Oh. How? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think I've always been a creative person, um, and I was. I was that child that was good at everything. So it was a bit of a problem trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And I think it got really worse when I was in university and I find myself like sketching or like reading magazines and stuff when I'm meant to be listening in pathology classes. So it was, it was a thing where I knew I was going to venture into it, but I just didn't know how. And it started as a hobby and it just developed from there. What were the challenges you faced when you decided to fully face you know, the creative directing side of your life and leave biomedical sciences from your family? I know it's not easy to go through the College of Medicine and tell your African parent that, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to use my degree, I want to do something else. So the joy with my job as a biomedical scientist, you have to find something wrong with that person for you to feel like you've done something, something great. Yeah. So imagine going to work every day and just like, Oh my God, that person has typhoid. Like, oh my God, that being, like, I mean, for you, it's yes, I figured it out yeah, at but the same time. It's so crazy. Yes. <laughs> and you know, you don't really have anyone you talk to. It's very clinical. And I'm like a chatty, happy person. So it wasn't me. And then I had a part-time job and I was working at Russell and Bromley, which is like a shoe shop, which is somewhat fashionable. And I enjoyed serving, meeting people, I, I just loved retail and I just looked and I'm like, I can earn as much money working in retail than doing and this. And doing what you'll be happy doing. So far, I'm just like, yeah, you moved on. It was hard. My mom was upset. Um, you know, I think when I, I had my first feature in like an, in, in, in a black hair, in black hair magazine, they did a feature about me and I was so happy. I wanted to show my mom, mommy, I love you. But I showed her and typical Yoruba man, she was like, eh, -huh, so you know how to dress. And, you know, when are you going back to school to do that MB? What, what, yes. what are you doing? You know, Your masters, your this, that's, that was the priority for her. So imagine having all that pressure and all that fear and not knowing if this will pan out or not. How are you able to pull through and not let any of that discourage you? Because it's very easy, especially, we might not like to admit it, but our parents' opinion go a long way. So how, is it, how are you able to pull through and just say, you know what, against all odds, I'm going to do what I have to do? I think after having that pre midlife crisis, I became rebellious and I became really upset with my mom. And, you know, I would say that I wanted to blame her for everything, but at some point I was just like, you need to take charge of your life. Yes, she gave birth to you and your parents give you life, but at the end of the day, what you make of it is your fault. And so, you're, you're excelling, you're doing so well now. Thank God. How long have you, have you had it going on for now? Wow, over a decade. That is a long time. Yes, over a decade. That is a long yes, time. Yes, yes. Professionally, so like I said, it started as a side hustle, mm -hmm. but I was lucky enough to work in proper retail establishments in London, Liberty, Selfridges, and then Harvey Nichols. So it, it, it was really great. And then I also, on the side, worked as a stylist, fashion editor, and then I became a magazine editor. So 
it gave me the opportunity to explore especially when you have an unorthodox way of learning because i didn't go to fashion school the only professional training i have was when i went to Condé Nast and i did like a, a summer learning the business of magazines and how to be an editor aside that everywhere i've worked everything i've done i've learned through managers through supervisors through mentors that don't know they're mentoring me, FYI. <laughs> but yeah, I've just as long read as they're, they're and men research. the mentorship is going on. Yeah. As yeah. long as it's going on. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so when you um, have a new client, how do you come up with what you want to get done for her? What inspires you? Or is it based off of what the person wants? Or is it usually left to you to just come up with whatever you I think it's a little bit of both. Okay. So I I like to speak to whoever I want to style or whatever creative director or whatever movie producer and find out what exactly they want. So you sit down and ask, you know, what do you want to achieve? What's your goal? What are you like? What kind of music do you listen to? You know, what do you gravitate towards? Are you a happy person? Are you a colorful person? So in that way, it's like, to me, I, pers I think personally, a style should be a reflection of you. And then if you're working on a project, it will be a reflection of what you want to achieve. You're trying exactly. To see, yes. So it's important for you to know who you are or what the project is about or what you're trying to project so it's not about me it's not about me imposing it's about me trying to interpret your vision and then in that process i can like sprinkle a little bit of this a little bit of that, that and then spice things exactly up. Yeah. and then make it give unique. it the bella touch <laughs> you can say that okay <laughs> but, yeah. so do that and you know create magic what else do you consult for um I, at the moment, I have a full-time job. Well, I always have a full-time job when I'm doing this. I'm sorry, this what, what do you mean by full-time job? <laughs> so, I think there's a creative side to myself and there's also a business side to myself. Um, so, I have a 8 to 5, should we call it an 8 to 5? Yes. You combine an 8 to 5 with being a creative director? Yeah. In Lagos? You have to hustle. How? Um, <laughs> it's good. I work as a business development manager for Persiana's Retail. It's a fashion company and we partner with global brands and we bring them to Nigeria for the consumers. So we have brands like Hugo Boss, Lacoste, Max, Puma and Inglot. So it's more or less like a consumer fashion retail company. That so, is interesting. Yeah, so basically I'm still working in fashion but I'm just working in the business side of fashion and hopefully we'll be dressing Nigeria and Africa and beyond in your favorite international brands amen and then on the side we're still styling you know the celebrities That's and people and creating impact eight to five with yeah pursuing your dreams you're living the life no i'm not you're, you're i'm not sleeping life. well i mean you have a new collection yes campaign tell yes. us about that okay so um we're in a political season right yes and it's funny because i feel like a lot of aspirational candidates, presidents, senates, governors, they all come out with this mandate, free food, free education, free this, and it's washed. And regular tea. Exactly. <laughs> and it's their campaign. And it's a scam. So it's a scam campaign. campaign. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going to <laughs> Wow. My next question was going to be, what does campaign mean? How yeah, it's a scam. It's a, it's, a, it's a scam of a campaign. Oh so, and then the t-shirts are quite graphic. And it's funny because I, I actually wanted to go all out and someone said to me, I might get into trouble. Yeah. Because if you look at the back of the t-shirts, you have like actual posters of supposedly politi politicians, you know, saying their mandates. And I just actually, I kind of just projected what they actually meant. <laughs> so, you know, 0% electricity. <laughs> zero percent no free education you know oh vote for me vote for my lifestyle you know enrich my pocket exactly vote at your own risk shine your eye nigeria that rebellious phase hasn't ended though. <laughs> it's still there it's, just a it's still bit. there but in all honesty the 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 reason why i actually chose to actually push this collection is because yes it's tongue-in-cheek yes i'm being really naughty but i'm actually bringing it home because at the end of the day, Nigeria is no longer that land flowing with milk and honey. That's what our parents used to tell us. Mm -hmm. And we're growing up and we're seeing this, you know. So you need to vote at your own risk. You need to shine your eye. You need to own your future. And if I can actually like, you know, communicate that through my pieces, then I'm doing a great job. Because 
it's important to me to look cool, but it's also important to pass on a message. Yes. So I don't want you to wear it and you think you're, you're wearing a corny t-shirt. I want you to wear it and you think, yes, this looks really, really cool, but you're also passing pass the message, message, which yeah. I feel is always the best way to do something. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Thank that's you. That's very amazing. Thank Rebellious, you. but very amazing. <laughs> Thank you. What would you say uh, the difference is between styling now mm -hmm. and the past generation, your mom's time, our grandparents' time? Do you think there's a connection or a great link between fashion of then and now? I think it is. I think there is a connection. And I think fashion is recycled. So it's kind of like an evolution. So back in the days, our parents were inspired by the older generation as well. So it's funny because it's not documented, we can't see it, but everything actually just takes a cycle. So if you look at it now, there's a 90s renaissance, and if you go back to look at your parents' pictures, they were wearing the same thing, but now we're just like trying to incorporate it with the new lifestyles and you know, you have your Instagrams and you have your pictures, so you can definitely just like interpret it and document it yeah. better, but everything is recycled. I always believe style is how you interpret yourself. So it's important that you get inspired by something. And we have like an encyclopedia of people's past life and past generations that we draw inspiration from. Wow. It's just how we interpret it and make it ours. That's the difference in this generation. Do you have any style tips for us? One or two, <sighs> help me so I can slay. Um, I think I have style tips for Lagos. For Lagos? Yeah, I know that okay. sounds really interesting. Very interesting, I'm yeah. waiting to see so what... So it's like, it's like if you wear a bodycon dress, wear trainers. So you don't look too much like a baby girl. Ah. Do you get what I mean? I get you. So if you're like wearing blonde hair or really loud hair, like wear a baggy t-shirt and shorts and heels. So you kind of look subtle, different, yes. and you don't look like you're trying too hard. Mm -hmm. Because like there's a, I know this is going to sound awful and people might come down on me hard, but there's a baby girlism situation. And you know, like you want to be different, but you want to be, you don't want to be seen as something as else. something else. So it's important for you to always like set an undertone to whatever you're doing. So it's like, oh yeah, she looks really cool, but she doesn't look trashy. Yeah. So if you if you if you're trying to wear something really sexy, it's cool for you to like, I don't know, tone it down tongue in cheek in a way. But then again, if you want to go all out, girl, go all the way. I'm in full support. <laughs> but you know, they're just like in Nigeria, a lot of people judge you by how you yeah. portray yourself. So it's important that, yes, you can identify yourself through what you wear, but also be aware that there's a culture factor to it. Hmm. So, yeah. Thank you so much, You're Bella. very welcome. I've had, I've had an amazing time talking to you. And I'm like, I really love my outfit. You look Thank adorable. you. I, my stylist is pretty good, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm You're looking forward to seeing everything else you have on your campaign uh, collection. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms at Ndani TV. I'm going to be trying out some of Bella's outfits. Please be sure to let me know what you think about them in the comment section. I'm Jemima and this is Fashion Insider.